This talk was originally given at AGU Fall Meeting in New Orleans, December 2017. Hello, I'm Eric De Longzhang, a graduate student in geochemistry from Louisiana State University. Today's talk is about the story of how iodine release from apatite in aqueous solutions. First, I would like to thank my colleagues from Louisiana State University and Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. This research is supported as part of WastePD, an energy frontier research center funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. The protagonist in today's talk is iodine-129, a radionuclide produced during nuclear fission. Iodine-129 has an extremely long half-life, 15.7 million years, and is highly mobile in the environment. Iodine has low solubility in glass, not suitable for conventional glass waste form. Radioactive iodine can be detrimental to human health. Human thyroid can concentrate up to 20 mg iodine. Chronic radiation from iodine can induce thyroid cancer. Therefore, iodine-129 is one of the most challenging nuclides to the disposal safety of nuclear waste. We need to have a concrete plan to ensure the long-term disposal safety of iodine-129. Apatite structured material is a promising nuclear waste form because, first, it's durable as demonstrated by natural minerals, and second, it is structurally and chemically flexible that can accommodate a wide range of radionuclides such as cesium, strontium, iodine, rare earth elements, and actinides. For the long-term safety of nuclear waste disposal, water is the primary concern. Natural water can travel underground through infiltration and percolation. In a geological repository, nuclear waste forms are packed together into metal canisters. Eventually, water will breach the canisters and contact and degrade the waste forms inside. Inevitably, radionuclides will enter the water cycle affecting biosphere and human health. It is critical for us to understand how iodine-129 is released from the apatite waste form. Will the iodine release rate be low enough to be safe? What is going to happen to iodine waste form during environmental degradation over hundreds, thousands, and even millions of years? In this study, we focus on the iodine release mechanism, especially in aqueous environments. Based on the studies of natural appetite minerals, we hypothesize that the iodine release is controlled by the dissolution of structural matrix and the diffusion by ion exchange. Here are our samples. Lead vanadinite iodoapatite, synthesized by our collaborators from RPI. We used a standard semi-dynamic leaching test to these samples for a typical experiment. A sample pallet was placed on a mesh stand in a Teflon vessel under constant temperature, 90 Celsius. The leaching solution was replaced every 24 hours. We tested samples in different solutions, including deionized water, organic pH buffers, sodium chloride, sodium carbonate, sodium phosphate, and sodium sulfate. The replaced solutions were analyzed by ICP mass and ICP AES. The leached surfaces were examined by SEM with EDS, XRD, infrared, and Raman spectroscopy. By characterizing the leaching behavior through the solution and the surface analysis, we were able to understand the mechanism that controls the iodine release from apatite. Our results show that in deionized water, Iodine release is controlled by short-term diffusion and long-term dissolution. The short-term diffusion gave a high initial release of iodine. The iodine rate then gradually decreased, reaching a flat line, indicating a congruent dissolution was taking control with constant rate. In addition, infrared spectroscopy detected a hydroxyl group on the leached surface, suggesting ion exchange between OH group and iodide. XRD shows single phase on the water-leached sample surface, which is identical to the unleached pristine sample. 
When we add ions in deionized water, such as 0.1 mol per liter sodium chloride, we found diffusion was significantly enhanced due to the rapid ion exchange between chloride and iodide. The iodine rates were continuously increasing nearly one magnitude higher than the water leaching under the same conditions. The XRD analysis identified original pristine phase and a new phase vanadonite, that 5 vo 43 chloride. It's a chlorine version of apatite, which confirmed the substitution of iodide by chloride. In pH neutral solution, such as 0.1 mol per liter sodium sulfate, the overall iodine release was accelerated compared to water leaching. The release pattern in sodium sulfate is similar to the deionized water. High initial rates gradually decreased, eventually reaching a flat line. Congruent release of lead and vanadium, plus identical XRD patterns as the water leached sample indicates similar mechanism, short-term diffusion and long-term dissolution processes. The overall enhanced release behavior are most likely caused by the reduced activity coefficient due to the high ionic strength of sodium sulfate solution. Here, we have acidic solution, pH 4 and 6 organic buffers. The iodine release in the acids are dominated by the dissolution process, which are exponentially higher than in the water. However, the iodine rate patterns are different between pH 4 and pH 6. The rates in pH 6 are relatively constant, whereas the pH 4 rates are gradually increasing until reaching a plateau. The molar ratio of iodine to vanadium in pH 6 are stoichiometric, but the ratio in pH 4 are way higher than stoichiometric value. SEM shows extensive corrosion occurred on both sample surfaces. We observed large grain formed on pH 4 leached sample. Rama spectroscopy identified is a new phase, travertite, led to V207. This precipitated phase does not uptake iodine, thus giving a high ratio of iodine to vanadium in pH 4. In basic conditions, we observed enhanced dissolution in both 0.1 molar per liter sodium carbonate and sodium phosphate solutions. Their solution pH values are between 10 to 11. It is very interesting. The leaching behavior of iodine in these basic solutions are similar to the pH 4, as shown in the iodine rates and the molar ratio between lead, vanadium, and iodine, which are significantly different from water leaching and indicate formation of secondary phase. SEM shows the sample leached by sodium carbonate and sodium phosphate have similar morphology large size of grains, which are also congregated. The XRD confirmed in sodium carbonate and sodium phosphate solutions, both sample surfaces are covered by a new phase with a structure resemble lead hydroxyl vanadonite, lead 10 vo 46 oh 2 In conclusion, iodine release in aqueous environment is contributed by congruent dissolution of material matrix and the diffusion by ion exchange. The release processes are susceptible to the solution chemistry, such as pH, ionic species, and ionic strength. Both high pH and low pH can accelerate iodine release. Small ions such as chloride can substitute iodide in apatite, leading to a rapid ion exchange and a high initial release. High ionic strength can reduce the activity coefficient of dissolved species and therefore increase the risk of surface reactions. In addition, secondary phase may occur such as charotide in acid solution and hydroxyl vanadonite in basic solution. Implications for the disposal safety of appetite waste form are avoid ion rich conditions as well as to create and maintain a neutral pH in repository environment. Thank you. Thank you.